Let's bring it home. Let's talk about some mineral deposits we can thank the Mesozoic era for giving us. Sorry, I had a brain fart there. Coal. Um, so as mentioned in when we're talking about the Paleozoic during the Pennsylvanian, most uh, much of the coal in North America is Pennsylvanian age. There's also some younger ones from the Cenozoic era, but there are important Mesozoic uh, coal deposits in the kind of Rocky Mountain states. They're mostly lower grade coal, lignite and bituminous coals. Um, but again, in the Western U.S., kind of with some of those interior seaways um, and the Sundance Seas, you get organic material that got trapped in the sedimentation process and thus formed some coal. So yeah, so there's different ways to mine out coal, especially nowadays. This is one way, um, surface removal or mountaintop removal. That's what this looks like. But also we have Gulf uh, oil and natural gas deposits in the in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, it formed on the broad shelf, uh, continental shelf, the shallows of the ocean during transgressions and regressions, which again mostly were on coastal areas. We did get some continental covering transgressive regressive events, but these are mostly uh, on the on the um, right along the coast, along the continental shelf. Uh, in these regions, uh, hydrocarbons are largely in reservoir rocks, rocks that kind of trap this material, um, that were kind of stream channels, stream deltas, uh, barrier islands, beach sand. So right at the boundary from land and ocean is where a lot of these uh, hydrocarbons, oil, natural gas, etc., uh, get um, uh, trapped and they're also in conjunction with those rising salt domes which helps to further trap oil and natural gas. <clears throat> so all of these right off the Gulf Coast again along the the continental shelf which extends uh, out to here and then we have the continental slope before we get out to the continental rise. So we're not looking so much out here but it's more so right in these what were shallow marine environments um, you know, limestone type environments. And this is where we're kind of mining for oil and gas. We are starting to get a little bit into deeper water. It's more shallow here, but Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, this is where a lot of these um, oil platforms are way out in the middle of the, of the water in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, deep water horizon, which you may have heard of, is an oil platform over here that uh, the pipe down at the bottom of the ocean ruptured, spilled a bunch of oil into the um, Gulf of Mexico, polluting a large swath of it. Mar Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg made the movie uh, about it. But anyway, um, you can see uh, these dark circles indicate years and, and with better technology, they're getting further and further and further out as all of this kind of gets, uh, you know, used up. So here's a, a fantastic map, kind of hard to see, but again, um, let me zoom in a little bit on this area as best I can. So all of these red dots are um, offshore plat flat platforms, these things that are out in the middle of the ocean where you drill down to the ocean floor and into it to get uh, and extract the, the oil. Um, they have to be a certain amount away from the coast, uh, depending on, on local laws. They have to be a certain amount away. And all of these little squares are, are future plots as you get further and further and further out. That uh, deep water horizon de disaster was out here in deep water. And this is what occurred. There was a rupture. There was an explosion. Oil poured into the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, it was kind of, uh, kind of some bad news. And if you've never seen the movie starring Marky Mark, oh, and my favorite, Kurt Russell, um, it's, a, it's a pretty good movie. Yeah based on a true story. So anyway, um, we have some oil and natural gas deposits during the Mesozoic. Uranium ores, all right, uranium utilized in nuclear power plants as well as uh, nuclear medicine, as well as nuclear weaponry, of course, but a number of other things that we use daily. Um, not sure if you know this, but the largest output nuclear power plant in the country and one of the biggest in the world is right here west of us in Phoenix out past Tonopah the Palo Verde nuclear power plant 
That's what provides all the electricity to us. That's what keeps all our air conditionings running during 120 degree summer days back to back to back to back. I love nuclear power. Um, it's a green energy. There's no pollution that comes out of, uh, of a nuclear power plant. The only thing that comes out of a nuclear power plant is water vapor. Um, yes, there's nuclear waste. Yes, it has to be stored. Yes, a couple of times in the past, nuclear reactors have blown up. Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, Fukushima. Yes, that's occurred. Um, but for the most part, nuclear energy is a green energy. Again, the only thing that comes, there's no carbon emissions that come out of a nuclear power plant, just water. That's it. It's dynamite. I love it. But anyway, you need uranium as well as other materials to make that work. So we, you know, are in need of, of uranium. And some of the richest uranium ores, the rocks containing uranium, um, are in Mesozoic rocks around the Colorado Plateau, around us, Colorado, Wyoming, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico. Um, one of the most common uranium-bearing minerals is carnitite. Um, looks a little bit like this. It's kind of this yellowish stuff. It's this yellowish stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, here is an example of uranium ore that we know exists in the Grand Canyon, in Grand Canyon area. <gasps> oh, excuse me. Um, and how that kind of forms. So, again, here's all these uh, Paleozoic rocks, Devonian, Mississippi, and Pennsylvania, and Permian that we've talked about. And there is some uranium ore uh, in the Grand Canyon area. Let me zoom in a little bit more here, uh, kind of in this. Uh, Coconino sandstone, which we've talked about, the Hermit formation, the Hermit shale. Uh, so kind of in, in this area we have uranium ore. Now, uh, two things from, from that. So we know there's uranium in and around the Grand Canyon area, or in the layers in and around the Grand Canyon area. So when you're hiking in the Grand Canyon, there are places where there are some natural springs that come out of the wall of the Grand Canyon. <clears throat> Don't drink the water. It, uh, it can contain uranium, which is radioactive, which would give you cancer. So just be careful, all right? So it looks nice. It looks ref refreshing, especially if you ran out of water. Eh, it has uranium in it, all right? But two, another issue is that if there's money to be made, people are going to try and exploit it. There are companies that want to go into the Grand Canyon region and essentially rip it up. Rip up the canyon so they can get to the uranium ore. It's a necessary, it's a necessary mineral. Uranium is necessary for a number of things, not just nuclear bombs. Um, but the one, the mining therein can release um, uranium ore into the water table into the underground aquifers that people use to to drink water it could seep into the grand canyon um you know maybe if the uranium ore gets into the, again these aquifers maybe over off the screen you know miles away there's a house that's tapping into that and have a well into the coconino aquifer to, to extract water and now uranium is in their water so just the the process of extracting uranium is dangerous let alone the the uh, natural environmental impacts if we're going in ripping up the grand canyon there's a, a number of native populations in the area that are dependent on the grand canyon dependent on the colorado river uh, as a source of fresh water as well as these aquifers that if we start to drill this stuff out you know we could be potentially poisoning um, people in and around the grand canyon on top of ripping up the Grand Canyon. So this is a current fight. This is an article from April of 2023. Um, you know, we are seeking protection in and around the Grand Canyon. They're trying to create a national monument uh, around the national park to further protect those lands from uh, uranium uh, mining. This is uh, Raul Grijalva. He is a congressman. Uh, he might be your congressman if you, uh, depending on, you know, when you're taking this class and where you live. Uh, he represents kind of areas of like Tullison and Avondale um, on, on south. Um, some other uh, Mesozoic deposits. Diamonds. Some diamond deposits. So in South Africa, it's the world's leading producer of gem quality diamonds, as well as pretty big in industrial diamond production. So industrial diamonds and gem quality diamonds. So 
um, for some tools. I know my dad was a machinist, and he always had tools that were diamond-tipped. It's not like a gem of a diamond was put on the edge of these things to help drill or cut better. You have diamond dust embedded in the edges of these drills or saw blades that help cut through things. Those are industrial diamonds. Those are different. Those are cheap. Those are different than gem quality, clear, you know, diamonds that you can make in a jewelry. So South Africa is the leader in gem quality diamonds and pretty big in industrial diamond mining. Um, but these mines come from these igneous intrusions called kimberlite pipes. Kimberlite is an igneous rock. It's a dark gray to kind of bluish igneous rock. Um, diamonds form at great depths down closer to the, the mantle area, but uh, when uh, explosive volcanism uh, occurs and these kimberlite pipe eruptions occurred during the Mesozoic, it brought those diamonds up uh, with them uh, as the magma moved up to the surface of the earth. Um, kimberlite pipes have been formed throughout geologic time, but the most intense period uh, was in South Africa during the Cretaceous period, during the Mesozoic. So this is what a kimberlite mine kind of looks like. Um, you kind of mine all of this grayish, bluish rock out and trying to extract the diamonds. So this is a, a diagram of a, a, what a kimberlite pipe. So what South Africa may have looked like in, port, in parts during the Cretaceous period of the Mesozoic era. So we have an ancient mag, magma source where we have uh, diamonds. And then because of magmatic and volcanic activity, as the magma moves up, it brings some of those diamonds with it. Now, over time, weathering and erosion occurred to where, um, you know, this is the current surface of the earth. So then we kind of mine down this pipe, this kimberlite pipe. That's why it kind of looks like this. You're kind of mining down this kimberlite pipe to extract the diamonds out of there. And again, this is what kimberlite is, is the kimberlite rock, and you're trying to extract uh, some diamonds. Some, some are good, some are not so good. And then gold. The mother load of gold, or the source for a type of gold deposit called placer deposits, uh, mined during the California gold rush, uh, that is located in Jurassic Age intrusive rocks of the Sierra Nevada. So those batholiths that occurred um, during the Cordilleran um, orogenies, um, in that granite there was gold. As that granitic material is weathered, the uh, gold comes out into river deposits, that's known as plaster deposits, and it's kind of mined out. Um, the California gold rush that took off in 1849 tapped into this Jurassic Age source of gold. A side note, if you're a football fan, um, FYI, so the California gold rush, it started in 1848, but it really took off in 1849. 49, 49ers. So the people that rushed and flocked to California to pan for gold were called 49ers, those that came to California in 1849, hence the San Francisco 49ers. That's where they got their nickname from. Um, you can also find gold in uh, river placer deposits and Cretaceous age conglomerates in California and Oregon as well, all thanks to the Cordier and Orogeny. And this is where you you know see these um, gold miners panning and, and what's called sluicing for gold in rivers and streams. Um, most people didn't make any money. The people that made money were the people that like owned saloons and, and general stores and little towns that popped up. These people barely found any gold. Some people were exploited um, for, for work, um, if close to slave labor. Um, so we see some um, Asian uh, population uh, that were exploited for labor during the um, uh, gold rush. And then porphyry copper. So magma generated by partial melting of the subducting plate, like the Farallon, um, causes the, the magma to rise towards the surface and it pre precipitates out particular metallic ores. Some of those metallic ores being copper. So due to this magma creeping up into the crust, um, copper got kind of put in place, especially along the western margins of North America and South America. Along this convergent boundary, we have what are known as porphyry deposits and large copper mines mining out uh, copper. And we have a number of these large mines here in Arizona. Okay, so some fun deposits. And that's it. It's been my honor. It's been my pleasure. Until next time.